Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is a pre-recorded service, so whenever you find yourself watching this, hello, you are very, very welcome. This is a service for Sunday the 31st of January 2021, the fourth Sunday of Epiphany. You may or may not know me, my name is Will Moore. Uh, I spent the first 18 years of my life growing up at Lawford Church. In the last few years of that, I was their choir director and organist. But in the benefice where I am now, I'm an authorised local preacher. Uh, and while you're offering online services, uh, I thought it'd be lovely to come back. And so I feel very, very blessed and, and very grateful that you've had me back to uh, share some reflection, some prayer, some scripture with you. So hello, everyone. I know there'll be lots of lovely people I know watching this video. But of course, this is a pre-recorded video, so it's not as interactive as Zoom or Facebook Live might be. But I really don't want that to stop us. So wherever you've found this video on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, please do comment and say hello to people. Say hello to each other like you would have done on Facebook Live. Uh, when we get to the reading, share your thoughts in the comments. When we get to the reflection where I ask questions, share your thoughts on that. Uh, and when we get to the prayers, if you have anything you want other people to pray for, comment them. Because uh, then we start to feel like a community, like we're at church. Uh, but do remember it's public forum, so whatever you put, um, it will be seen by other people. So before we start, shall we just stop and pray together? Almighty God, wherever we are in place and time, thank you that we can be together and share your word together. May we feel your spirit and your presence among us. And may we hear what you have to say to us in these unsettling and unprecedented times. Be our comfort and our peace as we gather together today. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, the Gospel reading for today is from Mark chapter 1. Uh, verses 21 to 28. So I'm just going to read that to you. If you've got a Bible, do, do read along. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, throwing him into convulsions and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. It's so lovely to be joining you again at Lawford Church, albeit virtually, and I feel very privileged to be able to share some reflection with you this morning on such a dramatic reading. It's the very first chapter of Mark and it sets the mood for the rest of the gospel. We have this powerful Jesus who tames demons and puts evil at bay. I think in church we are usually inclined to read passages like this and detach ourselves from it. We say these spirits and these demons are from the ancient world or, or they're biblical. Perhaps you might even say they don't exist at all. When I read this passage to you, what do you imagine? What do you imagine when we hear about these unclean spirits? Do you imagine some sort of energy or force? maybe a little character with horns and a tail. Perhaps you associated them with a particular colour, red maybe. We all have these mental images that come straight to our minds of spirits, but we're wrong to assume that they are only in the Bible. 
The forces of evil that Jesus talks about so often are still in this world. We might not imagine, interact or write about them like the people of the Bible once did, but they do still pose a threat. So, what are the unclean spirits of the world today? What form do they take? One of the benefits of a pre-recorded video is that you can pause. And so I invite you to pause the video and have a think, perhaps grab a piece of paper and pen, discuss it if you've got people with you, family. And maybe if you feel comfortable, add your thoughts to the comments of this video, whether you're on Facebook, Twitter or YouTube and think about these questions. What are the unclean spirits in the world today? What are the unclean spirits in your life? Things that bring us down, things that hinder our fellowship with others, things that get in the way of our relationship with God, things that are an obstacle for our own well-being and flourishing. The things that come to mind are violence, a hunger for power, idolatry of people or objects, money, abuse, unkindness, bullying, addiction. Perhaps some of these resonate with you or, or maybe you have others that you can share online or with the people around you. Once you've done that, you might feel a bit dark and gloomy, but there's something so important to see in this gospel reading. When this unclean man storms into the synagogue where Jesus is, the first thing he says is, have you come to destroy us? And then he says that he knows that Jesus is God. He says, I know you are the Holy One of God. Why is this important? Well, because without introduction or conversation, the evil spirit knew and feared Jesus. This means that they know Jesus has power and authority over them and that they have no chance at poisoning this man anymore. That is the same today as it was then. We may not experience dramatic exorcisms or spirits leaving bodies, but we see lives transformed by the love and power of Jesus Christ. We see things turned on their heads. We see the unexpected occurring and the improbable ensuing. We see people turn away from lives of destruction and pain to follow a life of holiness and goodness. Jesus banishes our unclean spirits. He takes away those things that leech off of our happiness, that make us dwell in doubt and despair, and he pulls us back up into his arms. Perhaps you might have heard of the story of Nicky Cruz as one example. He was a gang leader on the streets of New York, committing crimes and murders of all sorts. When approached by an evangelist once, he swore loudly he physically assaulted the man and he threatened to kill him. Yet later on, he dwelt on the hope that was promised by this pastor. He dwelt on the way his life could be changed forever. He could not forget it, it would not leave his mind. So, he gave up, he surrendered, he eventually accepted the love of Christ. He asked Jesus for forgiveness for all the awful things he had done and he turned his life around. He left the gang scene. He enrolled to a theological college. He headed up a charity to help troubled teenagers and he is now a pastor and evangelist in America. What changed his heart? Apparently for him, he said the death of Christ, that Jesus was a man just like him, who felt the same things, suffered the same troubles, experienced the same pain. But to accept Jesus into our lives is not a miracle cure. It doesn't end all the suffering forever just like that. Just as he is there to lift us up, 
He is there in the moments before when we are collapsed on the ground. He is by our side in the deepest of our struggles. He cries with us. He grieves with us. He screams with us. He feels with us. But he holds out his hand. He offers an invitation for us to recover together alongside Christ to find peace again in him. The other day I was watching Evan Almighty on Netflix, the sequel to Bruce Almighty. And when the wife of Evan is talking to God and she's understanding why her prayers aren't answered, God says, if you pray for patience, do you think God makes you patient or do you think God gives you opportunities to be patient? If you pray for your family to be closer together as she did, do you think God gives you opportunities for your family to be closer together rather than just to make you closer together? Jesus gives us an opportunity to transform our lives. He gives us an opportunity to banish those unclean spirits, just as Nikki Cruz did. It's about us taking that opportunity. The Gospels obviously hold their focus on Jesus. He stays in the spotlight for the rest of the Gospel of Mark. But I wonder what happened to the man in the reading. Once the evil spirits were banished from him, his life must have changed. He must have been transformed and yet we don't hear a thing. I'd like to think that if we're in the first chapter of Mark here, the very beginning of Jesus's adult ministry, that this man didn't bat an eyelid, he went off and followed Jesus for the rest of his earthly ministry. But maybe not. Maybe this man went back to his life, cleansed from unclean spirits, happy as Larry that Jesus had performed such a miracle on him. Either way, this man would have felt different. His life had been changed forever. He had seen and experienced firsthand the powerful workings of Jesus. And that can be us. Jesus is as real today as he was then. Lives can and are transformed every single day. He might have transformed yours already, he might have not, and he might be doing it right now. I don't know about you, but in these almost 12 months of various lockdowns and tears, I've had a lot of spare time. Some people have used it productively, baking, knitting, painting, drawing. I know I've read more books and done a lot more writing this January than I usually would have in several months. But many of us will have also used all that time in our hands to reflect. COVID-19 has made us live in a completely different way and when normality returns, who will we want to be? Who will you want to be? What will you, what will we do differently? One of the questions I encourage you to reflect on in these remaining weeks of lockdown, what can you do about those unclean spirits in your life? Those things that dampen your mood, that pull you apart from God, that cause friction with your friends and family, that stop you being who God made you to be, fearfully and wonderfully made. I encourage you, open your life to Jesus. Find him in your struggles and your suffering. And ask him to hold your hand to pull you up out of the depths of gloom and into the heights of his glory and his peace. And ask him to banish all the evil from your life. When we come out of this scary pandemic, though the madness of the world may still linger, 
and the evil we have seen around us may still be present. May we notice the opportunities that God gives us to transform. Let us be witnesses of that power and transforming love of Christ. So that once we have changed and transformed forever, others may know what he has done for us. Amen. And so one of the first ways that we can invite God to continually transform us is to pray. And so I just want to stop and read this week's collect. And maybe when this service ends or we'll pause the video before it finishes, you can continue to pray and invite Jesus into your life. And so the collect for today. God, our creator, who in the beginning commanded the light to shine out of darkness. We pray that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ may dispel the darkness of ignorance and unbelief. Shine into the hearts of all your people and reveal the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive, who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
thank you very much for having me today. And like I say, if you have thoughts, prayers, continue the conversation. Comment on the Lawford Church Facebook page or Twitter page or YouTube page. Um, and I'm sure regulars and the church wardens and I will interact and um, we can do church together this Sunday. God bless, take care, uh, and I'm always thinking and praying of all of you. See you soon.